I'm I'm presenting the uh, data services and solutions, uh, the first part is about the data in the grid as uh, anticipated by Gasly a uh, few minutes ago. Um, Uh, the outline of this presentation is about, uh, first of all, the categorization of data services in EGI uh, and uh, an overview of the state of the art uh, in the grid data services uh, area, uh, in, particular, in particular focusing on the status uh, uh, nowadays uh, about the data management in the grid and the future plans that uh, uh, we foresee for uh, uh, the grid services, uh, in particular about the storage gateway. Um, some uh, use cases will be um, uh, in the background of this presentation in the sense that uh, we are uh, trying to summarize in this presentation uh, the, the, the common uh, features that are uh, in, uh, in the use cases that are handled by uh, EGI uh, infrastructure. And uh, uh, at the end of the presentation, we will show what is next in the sense that uh, EGI is evolving. Uh, towards some direction uh, in order to uh, better uh, the products that are already in production nowadays. So uh, first of all, uh, EGI doesn't have just one product to handle everything, but uh, as you may uh, know already, uh, data management uh, is performed by interoperable components. And this is uh, uh, this is why this is because uh, different components can handle uh, different needs, and uh, each VO, each, uh, uh, for example, a competence center or user or research community can choose uh, their recipe uh, in order to fulfill their uh, needs, uh, their requirements. In particular, there are uh, requirements about uh, there are uh, uh, components that are um, at uh, storage management. Uh, uh, at site level, in the sense that there are components that uh, manage the storage that are inside one site, so you can have, uh, for example, multiple disks and multiple disk servers at one site, but uh, you can uh, abstract from that uh, view uh, one single view, which is simpler for, uh, for, for the user or for an application client. Uh, second point is about the transfer uh, between sites. This is a uh, a very uh, important point because uh, you can uh, uh, talk about interoperability uh, between sites uh, uh, in the same uh, infrastructure. So uh, the EGI uh, infrastructure um, uh, is made so that uh, you can use the same technologies to um, uh, export data so that sites can talk to each other without any uh, particular issue. Uh, security is about uh, uh, authentication and authorization uh, on a particular storage infrastructure, uh, on, on a particular transfer. And uh, um, this is about, uh, of, of course, the confidentiality and uh, in, uh, integrity of uh, data access and transfers. And finally, uh, we will talk about the catalog and the metadata. Uh, these are key uh, words uh, to uh, um, to, uh, how can I say, uh, the catalog and the metadata are different things. The catalog is the user view. It is a representation of the data that belong to a specific use case, while the metadata is the kind of the uh, uh, back end of this catalog, which is uh, uh, more uh, at site level or infrastructure level, which is hidden uh, to the user view. Uh, even this one is crucial because uh, uh, the catalog is mainly the access point that the user has on the data uh, management. So the first point is uh, how the how data are managed at site level. This is not uh, uh, very important uh, for at user level, but it is important to understand uh, why EGI is so complex uh, and why. Uh, it has this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, organization. So sites at a particular, uh, uh, the, the storage is organized at site level uh, in, uh, in this way. You can have uh, different uh, disks, you can have this different disk servers, and uh, uh, each disk server uh, of a um, common cluster file system uh, is uh, um, uh, 
and uh, some data, but uh, this complex system uh, cannot be, uh, I mean, loved by any users uh, in the in the world. Uh, some abstraction is uh, needed in order to uh, have an easy access to uh, this kind of infrastructure. Uh, for example, a unique namespace is provided to the user or to the client, in the sense that uh, uh, you have, uh, as you may uh, imagine from your, uh, just your portable, your computer, you can have file and directories. You want, uh, you want uh, basically a very similar uh, way to browse your content, your data. And uh, this is possible because the storage is managed like this. Uh, you have just names, you have uh, files and directories, but uh, uh, this is uh, the complexity of the storage that is uh, in the site. So uh, as you may uh, see from the picture, uh, the site can be complex and can be uh, really, uh, um, I mean, uh, there should be uh, a site administrator or more site administrators that uh, are managing this kind of uh, uh, technologies, but you shouldn't see as a user, which is the complexity of this work. So um, you will see a unique name, name, namespace, which is this uh, the first point in this uh, uh, slide, and uh, uh, you won't see this complexity. On the other side, this complexity is uh, uh, needed because uh, you have, uh, see the, uh, the point uh, uh, scalability. Uh, you want to have a way to make your site uh, uh, available 100% uh, uh, of the time. So if you want to add more storage because you have new disks for your site, uh, you don't want to do this uh, shutting down your disk servers because you have new ones and transfer data on the new disk server. You can just add new disk server to the old uh, infrastructure so that uh, you can add new uh, disk space available for the user. This is transparent to the user. On the other side, you, if you want, uh, as a site administrator, you want to shut down old servers, uh, you can uh, uh, migrate the old data of the old servers on the new servers. This is called the kind of uh, uh, evacuation of data from the disk servers. And, uh, uh, on the other side, uh, the user don't want, doesn't want to see which is uh, the, the management that is behind uh, this kind of operations. So, for, uh, just to, to summarize, the, uh, the main goal of this uh, complex infrastructure is to have a site that is always available, uh, in theory, uh, in order to have the, the, uh, the, uh, the user just use the storage without uh, uh, for forgetting about the technical details that are uh, on the, the data management. Uh, also, other features are that you, which are very important are authentication and encryption that uh, guarantee uh, confidentiality and integrity and the technologies that are provided in the UGI context uh, are usually uh, uh, supporting this kind of uh, principles. And also, you can see that uh, you can have uh, in addition to this, you can have, oh, for example, table. This is uh, called a hierarch hierarchical storage management. Uh, if you have it, uh, even in this case, you can have that the, the user doesn't know about that. Uh, it will you will experience, uh, for example, latencies, but uh, uh, because the data will be retrieved by tape, but the the namespace will be uh, uh, will be. Um, uh, usual one with the file and directory directories uh, browsable in a very simple way. So uh, these are examples of storage endpoints. You can see that there are the names of different technologies but uh, doing the same things. This is because there is uh, interoperability between uh, the different technologies. So you can use the DPM which is just a, a disk full management uh, um, uh, storage manager, uh, Storm, which is a little bit different, but uh, they behave, behave uh, like the same way on the, the uh, user interface, and it does support also tapes, uh, just like the cache on the uh, uh, on the right side of the slide. 
So the, this is another point. Uh, we are just uh, uh, going out of the uh, of the site level, and we are um, uh, asking ourselves about the interoperability between sites, in particular uh, transfer between one site and another site, and access to data um, from the uh, uh, from the outside. <coughs> Sorry. In this context. Um, uh, for example, uh, protocols uh, are crucial because uh, uh, the, the fact that uh, in EGI uh, standard protocols are used is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, is, is very important and uh, crucial to uh, assure that uh, sites can talk each other and uh, technologies can, can be developed in an open source uh, environment uh, freely. For example, um, yeah, say uh, applications and users can interact uh, with the, the endpoints using different protocols like SRM, which is uh, a very uh, grid-oriented protocol that guarantees uh, that uh, provides uh, this state uh, uh, transparency uh, manager and management um, uh, interface between uh, different transfer protocol in the sense that uh, you can uh, use uh, two SRM protocols, uh, two SRM endpoints, and uh, on, uh, on the bottom of this uh, SRM point, uh, there, there could be uh, different protocols uh, uh, supported by sites. So the, the SRM layer is just an interface between different protocols in different sites. Um, the grid FTP uh, offers advanced data transfer. Uh, also, this grid FTP uh, protocol is a very grid oriented protocol which guarantees, uh, which provides uh, a parallel schemes for tolerance, uh, security, and uh, uh, in particular, also optimization of the TCP uh, set. Um, also, uh, more uh, modern, I would say, uh, the approach with uh, the web DAV uh, and HTTP, HTTPS um, uh, endpoints and protocols. Uh, protocol. Um, the web DAV offers a web-based network file system. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, most probably, you know that the, the web DAV uh, protocol uh, is a, a standard. Uh, and widely supported by many operation, uh, operating systems. Uh, in practice, uh, you can have uh, already your web DAV client on your laptop and interact with your web DAV server uh, out of the box. Um, and this uh, is a very um, important point uh, because uh, um, you can directly see your data just using your laptop without uh, uh, difficult uh, and uh, uh, cryptic installations of gadgets on the laptop. Uh, DNFS 4.1 is another choice, you know, the possibility um, that provides local access uh, in the sense that it's a fast POSIX compliant way of accessing the storage resources. You can see that these protocols, these interfaces, or these plugins uh, work on top of this abstraction layer. Uh, on top of the uh, storage management uh, solution that you have chosen for uh, a particular site. And uh, finally, just uh, this slide uh, to, to uh, underline the fact that uh, as a BO, as a user, you don't have to use this complexly uh, as a whole, because you, you, you start from your use case your application, for example, if your application in a VO uh, is uh, uh, using WebDAV or using HTTPS, for example, then you will focus uh, on uh, developing, on deploying your uh, application on the grid just uh, using the interface that you want to use uh, to get rid of uh, the, the, other, the other protocols that you don't, uh, don't like and don't want. So this complexity is uh, related to the fact that uh, sites uh, must support uh, different uh, research communities. Can transfers be scheduled? Um, 
scheduling a transfer why because uh, if you want to transfer data from one side to another side this is easy you can trigger just uh, a transfer the RP that and you did and you do that but uh, if you as a view you have uh, several data sets several data on several sites you want to manage this in a structured way so for example you may have uh, uh, different transfers today and you want to prioritize some transfers because those data are uh, uh, involving uh, many users or, or uh, because those data are more important and must be prioritized in the transfers uh, because uh, um, they belong to a, a very important research. Uh, so this management uh, about transfer is called scheduling transfer. Just uh, as we talked about scheduling in the, uh, for example, the computing uh, context. And uh, uh, there is an application which is called FTS, uh, which uh, uh, handles this kind of, uh, uh, of activity. So first of all, schedules uh, continue to sustain the data transfer uh, across multiple endpoints. So you can uh, trigger um, a set of transfers and uh, prioritize them and then forget and then you can just uh, wait for the transfer to happen in the proper order that you have chosen uh, at first. <coughs> Second point, prioritize interview and interview uh, file transfers. Even here you can have VOs that are uh, I mean, more uh, prioritized in the UGI context uh, opportunistic VO can use the resources in the UGI context but are, uh, have, less, have a lower priority. In general, you can use FTS so that uh, your VO is uh, prioritized or uh, the opposite. Uh, even in one VO, in the, the VO context, you can choose which files or which data sets or which uh, uh, file groups uh, should be uh, transferred before uh, other ones. Uh, also, uh, FTS is able to interact with different protocols, uh, the ones that uh, basically we have seen uh, before, uh, so that uh, FTS can trigger transfers uh, between sites without uh, caring too much about the protocols that are used at the particular site. Um, useful uh, in the VO management context to control data transfer. So you can imagine a VO. Uh, responsible for these transfers or a group that is responsible for data transfer and then um, uh, these transfers are tasks activities just for uh, this uh, VO manager or this VO uh, group that is uh, um, that has this particular task of the task of data transfer management and this is the most common uh, question about uh, from from a user where are my files in the green context it can be uh, very difficult to understand uh, where are my data just because uh, the sites are very uh, are many just because the infrastructure is complex so uh, one uh, key uh, word in this context uh, in the context of this question is the uh, data uh, catalog Catalog is, uh, as I said before, is a representation of the data that uh, that belongs to a specific uh, VO. So each VO has its data, and a catalog just says uh, which are the data, and also with the other uh, information, additional information, which are the data that are uh, that belong to that VO and that are uh, on the grid somewhere. Um, the catalog doesn't have uh, information necessarily about uh, the, uh, the position, the location of the data, because uh, these, uh, um, these information are translated at, uh, uh, at some point, and this uh, translation is transparent to the user. So, uh, an example of uh, uh, a possible catalog in EGI is LFC, uh, Logical File Catalog. I don't want to uh, go further into the details of this LFC, but uh, you may ask uh, for, uh, further uh, later. Uh, basically, what LFC uh, provides is a hierarchical view 
of the files uh, to the users with a Unix-like client uh, interface. So you can see uh, in the example that uh, there is this grid slash uh, blah blah um, way of uh, addressing the files. Uh, and uh, there is a translation from uh, what is called the logical file name, which is uh, the file as we uh, already know from Unix world, uh, to the uh, storage URL. Uh, which are which is another way of uh, uh, of uh, naming the files, but uh, has uh, inside the position of the file, as you can see from this example. Uh, this is an SRM uh, URL, uh, so a storage URL. Uh, but we don't care uh, about that because uh, we, we we want to use it uh, if you use uh, the logical file catalog. This is exactly what the logical file catalog gives to you. Uh, finally, uh, you can see the EGI whole picture, which is very, very complex. This is a real-world uh, image uh, coming from the FPS uh, uh, monitoring system. You can see the transfers that are happening in this uh, particular moment. This real complex infrastructure is based on the elementary bricks we have seen. Uh, and uh, But on the other side, each VO chooses its recipe of components, so you don't have to Take, uh, to take care of all uh, the infrastructure, of the complexity of the infrastructure, because you have to just provide your uh, needs uh, to, um, to this uh, infrastructure, saying these are the protocols that I prefer because these are the protocols that are uh, used by my application. Um, this is mature and uh, stable, uh, mostly because uh, uh, mature because uh, there, there are uh, years that uh, um, uh, this infrastructure is in, in production and it is uh, kept stable by operations uh, so uh, online operations control uh, the stability uh, of the of the old machinery and the integration in uh, unified release controls the stability uh, I would say in the offline world or where you have to make patches uh, you uh, updates and uh, things like that What is next? Uh, some uh, something that is uh, uh, ongoing in the AGI context and uh, other project context. Um, dynamic federations is a way uh, is a set of components that can uh, aggregate uh, uh, storage uh, on the fly uh, and metadata uh, on the fly, um, exposing standard protocols like uh, the WebDAV, supporting redirections and one data. So this is something that is on top of the whole infrastructure, reads what is on the site, on the storage on the site, and uh, uh, provides a um, dynamic catalog of what is going on on the storage side of the grid. So if something changes, the catalog dynamically changes. Directories are merged so that files in the same directory appear inside the same directory even if they come from different sites. And this is important because this is a, a very uh, powerful abstraction uh, to the user uh, eye. Um, it is possible to browse and access uh, a huge repository uh, made of many sites without requiring a static index. So th there is no static index maintained, for example, uh, as you could imagine screen, uh, on a database, but this is uh, um, dynamic. Uh, this is exactly what the, the, the word dynamic wants to say. Uh, there is no registration or maintenance of catalogs. Uh, the redirection is intelligent in the sense that uh, um, uh, if there are replicas of, of the same file uh, in, in, in several sites, uh, the redirection is, is, is made so that you can use first one replica, then another replica, then another replica. This is a, a kind of a load balancing on all the sites. Um, and if you have, uh, uh, for example, one site that is loaded by your data, by your access to the data, you can just trigger a replication and then this uh, dynamic federated, federated uh, um, application can uh, split, uh, spread the load on the, on the site as soon as the replica, uh, new replica is available on the other side. Uh, accommodates 
uh, no, uh, automatically detects and avoids the site uh, that you're flying. So this is uh, uh, reliability. You can have one site that uh, at a certain point uh, goes off and uh, the Dynamics Federation uh, is able to uh, get aware of this and uh, uh, not trigger uh, access to that site anymore at uh, some point. Accommodates the client geography based redirection choice. It means that uh, if you, for example, you can make, um, I mean, uh, this means basically that uh, Dynamics Federation is uh, topology aware. Uh, you can have, um, for example, uh, a root uh, site, and then uh, you can have branches in Europe and the United States, and uh, branches in uh, different nations in the EU, in the EU context, for example. If in Italy a site uh, becomes uh, unavailable because and, and that's your replica or your file, the replica, uh, the access to another replica of the same file is triggered firstly in a site uh, that is in the European context, uh, so that uh, this geographically aware way of doing things uh, makes you uh, remain near the same place um, uh, you are accessing. So, for example, uh, in this case, uh, EU and US context, you avoid to use the oceanic uh, link. Uh, if uh, there is no replica in the same context, in the same European context uh, of the same uh, the, of the file that you are uh, searching for, then the the, the replica uh, is uh, uh, searched for uh, in uh, in the US context. Uh, there is a demo also available uh, on this federation dot dot de. <coughs> you can try it if you want, if you are curious to see. Uh, this is just uh, um, um, a picture of uh, what I am uh, explaining. You can see that uh, uh, there is file 2, for example, in uh, somewhere in this coast of the United States, uh, but also in uh, somewhere in Japan. Uh, and uh, um, so the, the same file can be in the catalog and uh, stored in, as a replica in uh, uh, many sites, uh, guaranteeing uh, load balancing, reliability, uh, um, and uh, redundancy, uh, and things like that. Of course, uh, you can imagine that uh, the first access is for file 2 in US. The second time, uh, it will be uh, in, in Japan and uh, so on. Uh, but what the user sees is uh, just uh, a POSIX file system. Okay. <coughs> um, see, yes, in this uh, this slide you can see that uh, uh, this is just a picture of uh, uh, how the component of dynamic federation are uh, put together. This is more technical, but you can see that uh, there is uh, 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 an infrastructure that is based on plugins. So uh, if you have a new protocol supported on a new SE or uh, an old SE, uh, you just can think of this uh, dynamic federation uh, infrastructure just to uh, write a new plugin to access this new way of uh, accessing data on the storage. So this is very uh, flexible. And also there is a metadata cache, which means that uh, uh, if you access files, uh, for the first time, uh, you will see uh, uh, some latency um, when accessing the file. Um, at the second time, uh, just uh, um, after the first, um, you will see that uh, the, the time for the access is uh, very, very short because uh, metadata are not are already in the cache for some time. So this is a, a big advantage in, uh, in accessing files. Um, some, all, uh, some other uh, technologies, uh, um, Globus Online and iRoads, uh, just a couple of slides uh, to say that Globus, Globus Online uh, provides uh, another way of uh, doing transfers. Uh, it provides a robust and easy to use file transfer capability. It provides a web interface to manage the, the transfer. Um, it ma makes the transfer management just like uh, we have seen for uh, for the PFTS, 
um, there is a performance monitoring in order to see how the links are behaving. Um, retries uh, after failures, so it's uh, a very reliable uh, uh, tool for transferring. Uh, there is uh, there are auto recover uh, uh, features when possible. On the other side, uh, you have to. Um, uh, to remember that it is a service, so you cannot ask, uh, for example, uh, where is the package for installing the Globus Online because uh, Globus Online is uh, on uh, in the US, and you have to use it. Uh, you have to just to use that uh, URL that is that is provided uh, in this slide. <coughs> uh, but uh, on the other side, uh, remember that uh, this is a, a third-party transfer in the sense that even if the service in the is in the US, and uh, you trigger a transfer between two sites in the EU. Um, the transfer happens really uh, from the site in the EU in the Europe uh, to the other site in Europe without passing through the US because the uh, the service performs a third party transfer, which means that uh, it uh, says it asks uh, to the source to push. The, uh, the file to the destination, or it asks to the destination to pull the file from the source. Um, uh, finally, the iRoads um, is a, an abstraction layer um, on top of storage resources. So um, this uh, uh, this is uh, um, another way of uh, uh, providing uh, grid storage resources. Um, in a, uh, I, I would say in a, uh, an integrated way, uh, the users focus on their data, not uh, on uh, uh, where they are on the grid. Just like we uh, show, we have shown uh, in, uh, in the uh, slides uh, just uh, before. Uh, it provides a native metadata catalog, uh, which is called iCat, um, so using its own catalog. Uh, it provides also multiple authentication plugins. So, uh, password is a, a way uh, PAM uh, um, or GSI uh, uh, is another way, but there are other ways of making the authentication. Uh, there are multiple access protocols supported. So, POSIX is the, the best one. Uh, there is also uh, S3 available as a protocol for uh, data access. Uh, also, Cephrados is supported and many other ways, just like we have shown in the UTI context uh, uh, for uh, SRM grid, FTP, web DAB, and uh, uh, NFS. Uh, one uh, uh, powerful feature of iRoads, which uh, justifies the, uh, the RO in the name itself, is the rule oriented approach in the sense that you can uh, make policies uh, in, inside uh, your VO. Uh, agreeing on those policies, you can uh, implement easily those policies uh, using iRoads itself, uh, creating data management uh, tasks. This is a very powerful feature, um, and I mean, uh, this is peculiar to iRoads. Uh, the integration in, uh, of iRoads in the, the EGI infrastructure is ongoing. Uh, one uh, last slide for the references. Uh, if you have questions uh, uh, afterwards, I would be happy to. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.